Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing great. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. Hopefully, you guys are having a wonderful summer. Only it feels like uh, we got about a month left in nice weather, and then we're back into the deep freeze, especially here uh, in the Northeast. So, hopefully, you guys are taking advantage of the weather uh, and everything good that is uh, of this beautiful life. So, hopefully, everybody is uh, doing well. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in, spending a couple of minutes uh, of your Sunday. If you could just do me one big favor, just be so kind, uh, click the like, support the channel, and we will hopefully continue to uh, bring you value. So here's kind of the, the good news, bad news scenario. So a month ago, we lost the 50-day moving average. And if you are brand new to the channel, uh, the 50-day moving average is kind of a big deal, right? It's uh, a shift in sentiment. Uh, it's a shift directly in price action. And it's very, very important, especially from the trading aspect, to understand which way the wind is blowing. Now, I was harping on the 50-day moving average for a very, very long time because that's a very, very definitive area of what is about to happen next. And for the next four weeks, okay, uh, the NASDAQ lost... 9.4 percent okay it wasn't uh, a random thing this is what happens uh when you lose the 50-day moving average and the opposite here if you go back to um if you go back to may the third well this is what happens when you reclaim the 50-day moving average you go on a massive massive run uh that went all the way through to the july uh 10 highs that's the bad news right that is the bad news the good news is in a weird way, the Bulls kind of won this week, okay? Although, if you look at the scoreboard, you're not going to really uh, figure that out. But if you look at the scoreboard, despite every, I mean, literally every single day, massive reversals, massive ranges, massive recoveries, the NASDAQ only lost two-tenths of a percent, okay? And why is that good is, well, just like on the way down, we lost the 50-day moving average, uh, all the good news is being sold. Now we're kind of getting that little bit of inkling of maybe good news is actually good news. And maybe bad news is starting to be bought as well. It's a little too early in the cycle to turn around and get excited saying, is that the bottom? I'm seeing a lot of people continuously talk about maybe that's the bottom. Well, the bottom was here and then the bottom was here and then the bottom was here. Stop calling bottoms. I, I don't know why, why it's so important to be the person that to call a bottom. Bottoms are irrelevant. Tops are irrelevant and bottoms are irrelevant. It's what you can do on the meat of the moon, not the last piece of crumb. So the idea that maybe uh, the, the August 5th lows was the bottom, that's great. That was the bottom, that's the bottom. But we're not going to know that. And it's not going to be anything meaningful until we reclaim back the 50-day moving average. But here's the good news, okay? If you look at how the week started, there was a massive unwind. Um all across major asset classes, especially Japan. I think Japan was down like 12 to 15%. On Monday, uh, we were down at one point, you know, massive, I mean, over 1,000 uh, on the NASDAQ, 1,200 on the Dow. And it, it had a lot of people, you know, thinking, having, you know, really aggressive flashbacks of the 1987 crash. It was a very, very uh, scary, especially for investors. But if you remember what happened on Monday, right, right, we recovered half our losses. The next day, right, we put in a higher high and a higher low. The following day, right, they try to engulf the whole day, right? They try to engulf the whole day on that big reversal candle and they couldn't do it because the next two days you started seeing higher highs and higher lows. And on Friday, we closed right at the 10 day moving average. So is this a sign of, well, maybe, maybe, right? Maybe, and again, like I said a couple of minutes ago, it doesn't make a difference if it was a bottom or not, but maybe is this going to be at least the scenario coming up, at least for the first part of the week for a continuation of a tradable move higher, right? And that's the very, very big question. Uh, obviously, when you go back to 2022, right? 
And I, I kind of, I tweeted this wrong. Okay. I tweeted this wrong. So I apologize uh, for a lot of you guys who misread that the wrong way. We're not in a bear market right now. Okay. I tweeted out a couple of days ago um, in 2022. 85% of, at least in my recollection, 85% of all the action below the 50-day moving average in 2022 was to the downside. We got periods of 15% rallies, pretty, you know, pretty aggressive rallies that lasted multiple days. You can see here, here's 2022. As much as we had disgusting sell-off, we still had periods of rallies in between those channels. So we're not in a bear market. Of course, we're not in a bear market, but the longer we stay below the 50-day moving average, well, it potentially could turn into a bear market. Because if you guys remember in 2022, we lost the 50-day moving average for a couple of weeks that they were selling. And they're like, ah, ha, what's the big deal? It's only a couple of weeks. And a couple of weeks turn into a calendar year that the NASDAQ lost 35%. So the label is, yes, we're not in a bear market, but we're in a very, very aggressive bear interval. You can't take that uh, and lightly just disregard that. We're still down 9.4%. Uh, in a matter of four weeks. So you can't turn around and go, this is nothing, right? Maybe this is nothing and it has only been a month and potentially get back above the 50-day moving average. But until we reclaim back the 50-day, and again, guys, we're 23 points below the 50-day moving average on the queues. It's not going to be just a snap of the finger where we're back in, in, in a bull interval. Right now, we are in a sell interval. And my point going into this week Despite being in this, in this sell interval, again, maybe last week was just an outlier event, outlier event that the market was actually distributing bad news and rallying, and maybe we just completely rolled back over. Again, it wouldn't surprise me. Again, we are underneath the 50-day moving average. But at the same time, if you are an open-minded, right, two-sided trader like the way I am, you know, again, I don't care uh, if the market is bull, bear, or indifferent, but I do care about the data. And the, the data that we did see the last three, four days, especially with that massive reversal uh, off the 2024 market crash on Monday, at least gives the upside some sort of credence going into Monday's session. Again, we we could we could wake up, uh, you know, we could wake up tomorrow morning and Nasdaq's out 300 points, and everything I say is moot and kind of and, and kind of reiterates that we are still in the sell cycle. But at least the close on Friday, right? At least Friday's close gives us the ability now to trade both sides of the market. And if you look at uh, if you look at the history of technical analysis, especially if you've been watching this channel for a while, you kind of know that the 10-day moving average, and that's that green line right here, okay, this represents the birth of the trade, right? Birth of the trade. The 50-day moving average is the birth of the trend. This is why we are down almost, you know, 9.2, 9.4%. Uh, in the last four weeks. So if the bulls can reclaim Friday's chat and reclaim back the 10-day moving average and start building above the two, uh, 452 level on the queues, this is going to be a very, very important number. Maybe we could start extending this, this bounce off the lows into this 456, maybe possibly into this 460 level, which is the 20-day supply. The flip side of it is, again, this is why you have to be prepared on both sides of the market, the flip side of it is, well, maybe that was just the bounce. Maybe the stocks, uh, you know, was an outlier event that, you know, we did bounce off bad news and now we're going higher and now we're going to roll back over because, again, we are still in a sell side uh, type of interval. You know, again, be prepared for both sides of the market. And if you look at Friday's pivots, right? If you look at Friday's pivots, did everything go crazy? No. But the stocks that did confirm did very, very well. And that's the whole point. I, I don't think. Uh, especially in the sell side environment, overall spectrum of sell side environment, I don't think you're going to have 28 stocks or 28 trades a day. But if you catch that one, if you can catch that two, if you can catch that three, that are breaking above the previous day's channel and confirming the previous day's channel, and the market is still holding up relatively well, you could get that good trade. You could get that uh, trade that maybe you know, makes you weak, right? Maybe makes your, uh, you know, a month, depending how aggressive you trade. But the hardest part, about trading in um, a sell side environment with upward bias in a very short vacuum, you don't know when they're going to pull. And that's the most important part. So when you see a lot of your favorite stocks, and I'm a mega cap trader, you know, a stock could be strong for 15 minutes and then sell off $4. We've seen that over and over again uh, in the last month. But if you are prepared 
and you do your due diligence and you are prepared on both sides of the market, you should get at least one or two value trades that you can make. Uh, you know, you can do pretty well and put some stakes uh, into the freezer. So if you look at Friday's action, here's my point about you don't need a million trades. You'll see uh, AMD 136.50 needs to build. Didn't get there. Uh, Tesla 270, 204 needs to confirm. Didn't get there. But here's my point. Meta is one of the very few names we discussed Meta on, I think it was Thursday's video because Wednesday I, I, I was a little busy. You know, here's one of the names that's still above the 50-day moving average. One of the stronger uh, beta names that had great earnings, literally had great earnings. And the most important part is they continue to build above the 50-day. That's the whole point. Above the 50-day is bullish. So here's an example. 520, uh, 510, 20 needs to build on Meta, right? So Meta is above the 50-day. 510, 20 needs to build. And look at the stock. Had a great move. Had a really, really great move. Because again, it's above the 50-day moving average. It's above supply, while 99% of all the other mega cap names are below supply. This is why it has room to run. So it took out the 510, 20. Again, is this a bull market straight up seven, eight dollars? No. But over the course of the day, after sitting there, getting punched in the face, getting punched in the kidneys, absorbing all the blows and couldn't sell off, well, it had a beautiful move and closed the high today at 518. Now, if we confirm the 10 day moving average going into Monday session, you could get a pushback uh, into the earnings highs of roughly 527. Again, beautiful move. Congratulations for you guys uh, who took a meta on uh, Friday. UPST. Move of the day. Definitely move of the day. UPST, we started seeing some September uh, 38 calls, some September 50 calls coming in. Huge short interest in the stock. Uh, UPST, 35.30 uh, needs to build. I mean, look at this move on UPST. Again, here's another example. It's above the 50-day moving average. That means it has room to run. So it took out the 35.30. It took out the 36.40 and traded all the way up to 38.50. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught uh, that as well. And here's my point of the cues. They have to get above the previous day's range. Remember, a stock cannot go higher. An ETF cannot go higher. There's no asset class that go, can go higher if it doesn't take out the previous day's channel. And that's the whole point. And cues, again, initially got rejected again off the 449 level, you know, back to back days, it needs to build. So here are the cues. They got back above the 449 level, right? It got back above the 449 level and traded into the 10 day moving average. Uh, all the way to the 452. That's why I keep on reiterating the start of the video. And we need to get back above the 452 level for a, for an extension of this bounce uh, off the lows. Uh, Google uh, never got below, uh, never got below 58.47. Amazon never got above uh, 57.60. So going into this week again, bulls need to reclaim back uh, 452. It's very very important. Bears need to reject. Uh, that 452 level in case they try to retest those levels. And here's some charts uh, that we definitely want to watch for this week. In case there is a rally, right? In case uh, the queues continue to build and reclaim back the 10 day moving average. Guys, let's watch Tesla. Tesla's been super duper tight here. Um, it's been rejected now a good amount of times on this 100 day supply. You see, you guys, this 100 day supply has been rejected one, two, three. If the market continues to rise and get back, gets back above the supply, hey, it could start stretching in. It's not going to be a massive parabolic move like it did here when it broke out. But, you know, baby steps. Beggars can't be choosers. However, on the other side, there is a flip side to this. Again, this is why we trade both sides, right? Look how many times it's been defended on uh, the bottom range of the 100-day SMA. Rejected off the EMA, supported on the SMA. If it loses the SMA to the downside, yes, we could retest uh, those lows. Uh, look at NVIDIA. Right, Nvidia very tight, right? Very tight, sloppy. Again, when it lost the 50-day moving average, it went from 120 all the way down to 90. Again, the power of technical analysis, and now it's just kind of sit, sitting around here in the middle of the range here, not here, not there. It keeps on getting rejected. You can see here got rejected twice off the 10-day moving average uh, in the last two out of the last three days. That's his goal. The bulls need to reclaim back 10-day to push this thing higher. At the same time, the bears rejected. Well, now we're looking back at the bottom of the range. Uh, Apple is actually held up very, very well. It's closed higher than it's open the whole week, even including uh, the quote-unquote 2024 crash. And it got rejected at the 20-day supply 
On Friday, watch Apple. If Apple can reclaim back the 20 supply, maybe it goes back into the 220. So really good, you know, really good uh, action potential for us uh, this week. Look at AMD, right? Look how tight this AMD is. You see how, talk about reject off the 10 day. AMD has got a reject off the 10 day moving average three days in a row for the exception of Friday. It was kind of a res day. If the market continues to rally and the Qs continue to reclaim back the 10 day, and so can AMD. AMD can push, man. AMD could really, really push. Look at this channel is very, very tight. So if you do your due diligence and you do your research, you'll see the importance of the 10 day going into Monday's action. Again, bulls need to write this level down, guys. It's, it, these are not random levels. The Qs need to reclaim 452 for an extension of the rally. And the bears need to reject that level and start pushing below Friday's lows. Guys, God bless everybody. Have an awesome, amazing uh, rest of your Sunday and God's help. I will see a lot of you guys on the field tomorrow. Take care.